also one of the young players coming in in 2015 and now you are the captain um, is there any advice you received during your younger days that resonated with you and that you sort of would like to share with uh, with the rest of your team with especially with the with the younger lot uh, uh see it is simple my brother gave me that advice and uh, uh, it was easy just to be myself uh, because uh, there is always a sense of belonging question happens to the youngsters anyone who comes to this stage it's a massive stage uh, so many people so many eyes on you um, the only questions keeps popping in your head that do i belong here and uh, when i was in the same lingo in 2015 and 16 asking this that am i am i not what is happening and i think my brother told me that you know what you are good enough to be here that's why you belong here and uh, and yeah from then from that time onwards i always focused on uh, um, you know making sure that uh, you know i enjoy the sport and i exactly same thing which i want from all the youngsters come and enjoy be yourself show your character what you are made of and uh, yeah we're going to be there mark and we have wonderful support staff we all going to be there to help them to kind of make sure they achieve and they prepare in the bestest ability and achieve a lot of greatness in their life you know speaking about the coaching staff um the the original gang is back together uh, karan pollard uh, lasit malenga so what's it like to come back and seeing them in different roles uh, you know you've played so much of your cricket at mumbai with them so what's it like being back together with the both of them very excited uh, obviously i uh, when i played with them i sh shared a very good bond with both of them and now uh, one being bowling coach one being batting coach uh, it is a uh, little uh, surprising but a very warm and very happy surprise that uh, people who i enjoyed playing who are legends of the sport um, are there to help me and obviously mark mark leads them and mark has been fantastic from his standpoint of how clarity point of view to backing and everything which has been wonderful so overall as a group uh, it's it's been fantastic so far um, and i'm sure it's going to be more even be better going forward amazing um all right so we'll be taking some questions uh, from from the journalists here yes uh, hi hardik i'm uh, rohan from the free press journal uh, firstly uh, welcome back to mi Thank uh, you. very happy to see you back Thank you. Uh, i have two questions for you firstly uh, we were hearing rumors that uh, there was a captaincy clause in your contract uh, Okay so uh, second question would be uh, how challenging will it be to play this IPL in two phases this time uh is it in two phases schedule is not at you out so i don't know i can't comment on that uh hi guys hi 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 yes hi hi so good afternoon to both of you my name is dr pratimna timbekar uh, i am from red fm uh my question is to mark and hardik both mark i'll start with you first you've seen hardik the player we've seen hardik the captain we've seen hardik in the lead role how much of excitement would you like to see from the dugout when it comes uh, to the fact that he'll be do you know like the hardik the all rounder you know like what's that perspective like and hardik my question to you is uh, you know i've worked as a team doctor and a sports psychologist in various sports as well uh, i've seen your team Uh, you've won championships together, and also there's been a phase where Mumbai Indians had a dip as well. You know this topsy turvy ride. How much time psychologically would the team require to you know set into that winning momentum again? Given the fact that you've won five championships as well, and how much of a significant impact you can provide? Given that now there are team leaders, so how much addition would that uh, you know point out from a psychological point of view? Mark, question first uh, on Hardik. Um, look, I've. I didn't I didn't ever play against Hardik thank thankfully um I think myself and him would have had quite a war out in the middle uh, he likes to stand his ground and so do I um but yeah I mean it's watching him in the IPLs playing for India I mean you can only be in awe of of the all-rounder that he is uh, he always wants to get involved in the game um whether it be with the bat or the, with the ball what's what's great for me is that he loves the pressure moments as well and he's done really well he's excelled um you know winners create winners and he's won trophies for MI he showed that he went to Gujarat and he won trophies there as well so to have him back in our in our setup it's only going to strengthen uh, Mumbai Indians um so I'm very excited to have him sitting in the dugout pick his brain as I see as I said earlier like different perspectives different challenges 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and as I said, you know, our support staff will support him as much as, and as, as, much as he wants us to. Uh, and, you know, hopefully something comes of that. We're not going to put too much pressure on each other. I think if we do the right processes, the outcome will take care of itself. So very happy to, to have him sitting in our, in our dugout. I don't want to see him in the dugout too much. I want to see him out in the middle because that means that we're doing well. Uh, my answer to your question, psychology, how it makes difference. See, uh, winning and losing is part of the sport. Um, we all have to accept that and I think we all have accepted as well that someone's going to lose, someone's going to win. Uh, but something which, which is very important is that uh, how do you stay neutral? You know, because that is important. As you mentioned that sometimes losing can take you down and winning can take you up. But what I have believed in whichever team I have played or even myself that uh, I don't take myself up in success, I don't take myself down in uh, failures. So in that process, what happens, I'm able to be more consistent with my approaches, which my uh, formulas or which my intentions, because there is not much fluctuation happening going up and down. And I think that has helped me big time in my sport and my career and just the teams which I have played. Um, and coming back to we have won five times and obviously there is expectations and all. Uh, but the same answers to the, it takes time, it takes process. You know, it's not a magic wand. I, everyone has that shakalaka boom, 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 we won the trophy. It is something which takes time, a right effort, right intentions, um, caring for each other, having sympathy and empathy for each other. And all these parts for me are very important and very crucial. And uh, if we manage to get all them together, I think we'll be on the right track to achieve something which we all want to do. Uh, Mark, over here. Uh, I just want to know that what was the one reason that made you dis uh, that made the management decide that Rohit should not captain uh, the Mumbai Indians and Hardik should captain the Mumbai Indians? No, I'm asking Mark about. Uh, hi, uh, hi, I'm Karen from OTT Play. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, one, the first question anyone can answer. Uh, with the World Cup coming up and like Hardik said, injury can happen anytime. What is the player management going to be with leading to the World Cup? Are you all going to keep replacing players, especially the World Cup bound players? And Hardik, how was your welcome in the MI team? I think, let me answer from the players management perspective. Obviously, my job is, is coaching Mumbai Indians. Um, I'm no longer a coach of an international team, so I'm going to be a little bit biased and say that um, you know we'd like our best players to be playing at, at all times. However, I have got a, a soft spot for the players, and no matter what happens, we we'll always look at the player first and, and have, his, have, his, have his intentions uh, at heart. So you know we're not going to go out and, and play a player for the sake of playing him, knowing that he's going to get injured. Uh, I understand the professional world of sport today. Uh, there's certain players who might be carrying niggles. That's why I lean on my medical team um, to, to give me good advice of whether we can push a player or whether it's not a good idea to push a player. So we'll always have that interest of the player at heart, um, but hopefully we can keep them on the field. And bottom line is, you know, sometimes you just got to back the player and ask the player how you're feeling. If he's not feeling up to it, there's enough honesty in our dressing room that I think he could, he could come and chat to me and say, listen, yeah, coach, I'd, I'd like a break here. Or... He might say to me, listen, I don't want to have a break. Um, sometimes you've got to fight that with the player as well, where the medical team say one thing and the player says other things. So it's a relationship that, and the trust that you form with, with, your, with your team and your team members and also the medical team that, that make that decision. Uh, my answer has been, uh, it's been amazing coming back, uh, being in my, where I live as well. Um, Again, coming back to where it all started and now the journey is going to continue. So very, very excited, very happy. Um, the welcome was wonderful. Uh, it was very warm and it was very emotional. And uh, yeah, two years back, never thought we'll be back here, but I am. Hardik, this is Gaurav Gupta from Times of India. Uh, Hi, you've, uh, uh, you know, had a few injuries in your career. So, I mean, can you describe this phase? I mean, you went out in the middle of the World Cup, which must have been very tough on you. And then from there to the uh, getting the MI captaincy and all the, that was said on social media. So, can you take us through that journey a bit that how was it, you know, this? Uh, see, when, when, when I got injured, uh, uh, when it happened, first of all, when it happened, I had no clue how bad it is or how good it is. Uh, when I went to the scan as well, initially it just showed because um, when I twisted my whole ankle, it just showed that it's just a little nickel which 
would be fine. But as a couple of hours progressed, it showed the real, real picture where my ankle became like a big ankle. And uh, in that process, uh, straight away, next, next day, I went to NCA uh, to make sure that I fasten my processes and make sure that I come back. Uh, again, we tried every day, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, we are available for the World Cup and we had to take a call uh, after 12th day where I was still, I had a reoccurring again where I had to, I did, uh, my injury kind of expanded more. And um, the question was that, do I want to represent India at 50%? Uh, the answer was no, because um, India deserves better than that. Um, and I myself will be not be able to justify the fact that I'm coming not completely ready. And from there, obviously, this journey started of my rehab. Uh, and the whole process was the focus was only to make sure that I come back as soon as possible. Uh, but with injuries and uh, with something like a freak injury which I had, in that you need to give time because it is um, not something which goes away in mobility or it goes with uh, physio helping you. It is just natural natural body recovery which you need to do. And obviously then the whole MI thing came, um, me coming back, it was more exciting time. I was sitting at home training and working hard. Um, this news came which was even more special. So yeah, since then it is just the journey has been going on. All right, Hi. one final question before we move on to the, the fan section. Yes? Hi. Hartik, one question to you Hi. about Mumbai Indians. I mean, from the time you went and the time you came back, how much has the complexion of the entire squad has changed? And one question, how much has the complexion of the entire Mumbai Indian squad has changed from the time you left? And one question to the coach, uh, uh, given the way Cameron Green was shaping up, uh, having joined the squad last year, having played quite a few innings which were kind of uh, impactful and not having him this, around this time, how much uh, change would you be forced to make in terms of the whole squad composition? Um, see, the, obviously when I, it's been two years, this is my third year by the time I come back, a lot have changed. Uh, as you, as he mentioned, coaches have changed. Players are only my four, five core people who I used to play are the same people who are here. Uh, so even it, this is also a little different, um, but, uh, the name remains the same. So the emotion and the love remains also the same. So, um, it is different, but I think we all are getting used to it and, um, uh, um, yeah, looking forward for it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, right. Sorry. Uh, so sorry. With regards to Cameron Green, yeah. So that's the beauty of the RPL is um, that uh, the auction uh, the changes dynamics of a lot of lot of different teams and, and seasons. And Cameron Green uh, had a fantastic season for us. And I, th I think the way that he played, the exciting brand of cricket that he played was, was great uh, from our perspective. As I said, auctions change and, um, you know, we, we had a couple of holes in our team um, that we needed to, to fill up. Uh, and unfortunately, we had to, you know, we, we went with the decision to, to let go of him. Um, but we've selected along the lines of, of looking at players that can hopefully fulfill that role again. Um, we've got a couple of options available to us and, and hopefully that guy can come in in the big shoes that Cameron did have and, and fill them um, with flying colours. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Cam did have a great season for us, but uh, we have earmarked one or two players to fulfill that. All right, thank you so much. Um, I'm now going to move on uh, to a very special fan section. We have our MI Paltan, who is also tuned in across from across the world. And we've shortlisted a few questions that have come in for you guys. All right, uh, let me just open it. All right, so the first question we have, uh, it's from Hitansh, Hitanshu Jadav19. His question is, uh, to Hardik, uh, good to see you back in Mumbai. Can we see our vintage hitter Kung Fu Pandya back in action uh, like the old days and winning matches? Um, yes, uh, the roles have changed. I'm back to what I've done throughout my career and uh, looking forward to that role and uh, I'm going to make sure that I, I do justice to all the expectations which people have and um, yeah, very excited. All right, um, next question is from Crick Crazy Johns. And um, he's asked, he's like, in what role will we see uh, Hardik this season? You've played in various roles at various batting positions. So um, what, can we, what role can we expect to see you uh, in the uh, IPL this season? This IPL, obviously, I'll be all-rounder. Uh, and uh, well, I'll try to finish as many games possible. And, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be there, down there, making sure that 
I hit as many runs possible and uh, um, enjoy, actually. Enjoy the position which I have always loved. Awesome. All right. Um, next question is from Parag underscore Mantpe. And he's asked, it, either of y'all could answer, is will MI win their opening game this season and break the jinx? As I said earlier, we've addressed that. Um, we understand that uh, we haven't started off well in, in the last few seasons. So we, yeah, more than a few, I've just been reminded. Um, we've addressed that issue. If he's got any ideas on how to solve that, please, I'm more than willing to, to listen to him. But we've, we've uh, put, in, put one or two things in place that we think might be the change. Uh, not, I don't want to put any pressure on the players. Hopefully it, it works for us. If it doesn't work for us, no, then we just back to the good old usual. We're going to have to cap, play a bit of catch up. Awesome. All right. And the final question is from Tahu underscore FCC. And his question is, with the new roles being recruited and new big additions to the side, how has the approach to the new season changed from the previous years? Um, I don't. I don't think it's it's changed immensely. Um, you know, as I said, with with Tadi coming in, a couple of new perceptions on on how we want to play. I think last year we showed signs of of the, the, the sort of brand that we want to play, which is a very exciting to me. Um, you know, as I said, we had a couple of injury concerns, but this year we, we look like we in a good place with regards to all the players and characters that we want to play a certain sort of brand. So I think that the fans can uh, expect a, a nice positive brand of cricket um, and, and uh, we want to allow the players to really go out there and express themselves because we've got some immense talent within our squad um, and I think Hardik's the type of captain who's going to you know, take that on board as well and he's an, a nice aggressive uh, player as well so I'm sure that uh, every, every member within the team that walks onto the field is going to feel like they can go and, and win a game for us and we're going to try to allow them to, to go dominate that space. Awesome. All right, um, now we are going to move on to uh, something special, something fun with the journalists sitting in the room. Um, do you want to do, uh, sorry? Oh, there's more questions. All right, we could take some more questions. Hi, Hardeep Nichil from ETV. Hi. One of you can answer. How openly will Rohit play as a batter in this season, considering he doesn't have any captaincy pressure? And is this an added advantage for Mumbai Indians going into the season? I think Rohit's in fantastic form. I've been watching the... the the games against England and the way that he's hitting the ball, these movements into the ball are fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to, to Ro going out and, and really expressing himself, um, you know, as, as you said, with, without the captaincy on, on his shoulders. Uh, I think, um, you know, all of us in, in Mumbai Indians are, are really excited to see him go out there and, and have a fantastic season for us. If he has a great season for us, we're going to be in the, in the dying stages of the tournament, which is, I think, what we and the fans want. I... Uh Hardik, uh, welcome back to Mumbai Indians. Thank uh, you. After the transfer, did you have a chat with Shubman Gill about kind of passing on the baton about G? Hardik, hi. Uh, hi. Y Yash from ESPN Trick Info. Uh, one thing MI missed last season, your coach would probably agree, was the services of Jaspreet Bumrah. He's back. Uh, he's at a crazy run of form from the World Cup, the England series. How big a shot in the arm is it for the team on the whole? And how much of his uh, role do you see as part of your leadership group, given that that's also a role he's taken on? And the question to the coach is, do you have a gauge on who your overseas quartet is likely to be? Uh, speaking about Jassi, uh, Jassi, Jassi has been a number one bowler for a long time. He's been a champion cricketer. Um, yes, um, last year they did miss him. Uh, this year we are fortunate that he is available and firing with all cylinders. And uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be one of the leaders who's going to make sure that uh, he guides all the bowlers because the kind of experience and the knowledge which he has. So looking forward for all, all that and especially very excited to have him back with full throttle and at the same point of time helping the youngsters because the kind of knowledge and uh, ideas he has um, and it's not just he throws them he has done that in reality as well so a lot of ten, a lot of people can take inspi inspiration from him and make sure that they kind of replicate what he does it's very difficult but we can still try with regards to the overseas quartet I mean if you have a look at our all the, the players that we've selected um, we've got plenty of options uh, so I think that this season we can choose condition related uh, we'll have a look at and see which players best suit different conditions. The nice thing about our team 
is, and the squad, is that we've got a lot of very, very good local players to choose from. Um, you have a look at our, our batting lineup on, on paper. Um, it's, it's largely an Indian, uh, Indian uh, cricket team batting lineup. So that's, that's a, a big advantage for us as well. Uh, there might even be situations where we only go in with three. Uh, three overseas players um, without giving too much away and, and maybe have one or two options as impact players on the bench and as I said, have a look at the conditions, see what's best going to suit us. Um, so we are blessed in, in that regard that we've got a, a lot of very good uh, local Indian players. Hey. <coughs> Question for Mark, uh, but Hardik can also answer. This is Kumar Sham from Al Etihad, which is an Abu Dhabi newspaper. MI Emirates, uh, which is your other franchisee, won the local league there. Uh, there's a lots of ifs and buts to this question, but just in case that the IPL gets moved out and goes to the UAE as it is being presumed, uh, do you think there will be an added price on your team uh, to be uh, the one to be beating? Sorry? Yeah, just in case. So if uh, that's about my pay grade. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, hi, my name is uh, Rohan. I'm... F I'm from 94.3 Radio 1. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say it's an honor to talk to the both of y'all. And um, I just wanted to start off with uh, Mark first. Uh, Mark, uh, does uh, Hardik remind you a little of Jacques Carlis? Because you've played with Jacques Carlis, he's a great. And uh, Hardik is also one of the uh, best all-rounders uh, we've had in the recent few years, decade maybe, the recent few years. Second question is, how is the relationship between Nuan and Malinga in the camp since they're both similar bowlers? And my last question to Hardik is, uh, Hardik, you've been a really successful uh, top order batsman for in the last two seasons. And you've been uh, one of the best, all, uh, the best finishers in the world. And you've been one of the most amazing bowlers as well, bowling really, really well. Uh, so what's your favorite role amongst these three? Sorry, I was, that was too long, but I'm done. Thank you. Okay, your first question, does he remind me of Jacques Callis? He's got a lot more hair than Jacques Callis has. <laughs> so that's a positive. His, his hair's going in the right direction. Look, Jacques is a fantastic cricketer, if not one of the greatest all-rounders that, that has ever been produced. Um, and he's a good close friend of mine as well. Um, so Hadik, even to be mentioned in, in, in Jacques Callis' breath, I think, you know, he'd look at it and go like, Yo, I've achieved something in life. So... Having a look at Hardik as an all-rounder, he can win you a, ma a match with the ball and he can win you a match with the bat. So we are very privileged to have him at Mumbai Indians as well. And it's, um, as I said before, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to him challenging me and me challenging him in, in our relationship. Um, so I'll probably be able to answer that once I've spent a bit more time with him as well. Um, with regards to Nuan and uh, Mali, um, you know, they come from the same country. They've got the same action. So it's, it's a match made in heaven, really. Um, you know, the, the, the conversations that they have, I can't say I understand them because it's in a different language. But uh, I, I see, I see the, the, the perfect coach for, for Nuan. Um, you know, we first saw Nuan, well, I first saw him in, in, in Abu Dhabi. Um, and I was really surprised with, with uh, his action and the way that he was delivering balls. So he's got that X factor about him. And uh, who better to, to look after him than a guy who's he's probably looked at his action and tried to copy. So um, I think they're both in a very good space. My answer, what do I enjoy the most? Uh, see, I always have extra love for batting. And especially when it comes to uh, finishing games has been more, even more special. So I'll keep it short. Something which I love is uh, batting and finishing game. But uh, the biggest uh, happiness I get is when I play as an all-rounder. Okay, that was, uh, that was it from the questions from the room here. We are now going to move on to do something fun with all the journalists present here. We're going to do a little bit of a Mumbai Indians quiz with y'all and um, you get you stand a chance to win some hampers. So if you guys don't mind, we could uh, just about start that. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. If you guys know the answer, please raise your hand and you'll be getting a mic. Okay, so first question is, how many times have MI won in T20 leagues? All right, Rohan? Nine. Sorry, nine? No. Ten. That's correct, ten. That's the right answer. Across T20 leagues, Mumbai Indians have won ten times. Okay, now, um, next question is, when did Hardik Pandya make his debut 
for Mumbai Indians. What year? <laughs> yeah, you kind of gave the answer at the beginning. <laughs> All right. Next one is, who has hit the most number of sixes for Mumbai Indians in the IPL? That's right, Garden Pollard is the right answer. Okay, uh, next one is, who was the player of the final when Mumbai Indians won the title in 2019? Yes, you write that? N no. Uh, who was the man of the match in the 2019 final, which was one of the most fantastic games it's, ever it, played? It's Bumrah. That's right, it was Jaspreet Bumrah. And the last one, the last question is, who was the player of the match in the first IPL match that Mumbai Indians played? That's correct. It's actually, it was actually Mark Boucher. Yes. <laughs> Again, for RCB, he scored 39 not out and was a match winning innings. <laughs> Did you ever think then that you would be coaching? <laughs> All right, that was it for the quiz. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, we would now uh, like to do a little bit of a ball signing. If you guys don't mind, can we have the and some pictures? Yeah. We're going to open it up for some pictures.